Are we starting? Yeah. We're all good? We're yeah. here? Wow. We're here? How should we start? On? Should we talk about our suits? Uh, yes, Lauren, please explain why we're in blazers. <laughs> Full-blown blazers business attire. Um, well, I was talking to my boyfriend, Jeff, and he said that he watched the episode, the Friends episode, where I'm wearing a yellow raggedy shirt. And I said... I don't the really one like with uh, your toothpaste on it? Yeah. And I said, I didn't really <laughs> like how I looked in that one. And he, and I thought he was just going to respond, no, he looked great. But he's like, well, you know, clothing obviously is you know, really important. So maybe you just want to think about that moving forward. For example, <laughs> he goes, for example, I had an interview and I wore a suit. And they said they really, really liked my suit. <laughs> And I was like, Jeff, I may not know the, m much about the podcast industry, but I don't think <laughs> that suits are required. No, the exact so, opposite. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here we are to please Jeffrey. M Jeffrey. One fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. Just one. But we take criticism very seriously. <laughs> Clearly. We love to incorporate. We do. Um, Which brings us to today's episode. Mm-hmm. Work. work, work, work. You better work. <laughs> work, 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 work. Working women. Mm -hmm. So I like to um, play the part. Yes. We all three are working women. So mm -hmm. believe I don't, it or not, I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do appreciate my job. I was unemployed for a full a full year. Morgan's so. boss is watching. Yeah. Right now. Like really? <laughs> do you guys ever feel kind of like a superhero where you like change by day and night? You go into the, the work world and you're all professional and serious and then you come into the podcast and you're just Yeah. Right now I I don't I see no difference. <laughs> the, the suit changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a lot of research though about mm -hmm. dressing, mm -hmm. like actually changing your mindset. Mm -hmm. And if you do a Superman pose mm. for like five minutes before you have a big test and interview, you're like more likely to do well. That, yeah. was, that was Jeff's logic. That is exactly of. what yeah. Jeff was trying yeah. to say. But I was like, no, you don't understand. At podcasts, the, people don't dress like that. That's it, it's. If anything, it's more uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It yeah. is. It truly really is. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah. I know. The three of us, too. We're all talkers. So mm -hmm. I feel like a golden retriever already because I keep like, who's got the ball? <laughs> who's got the ball? Like, <laughs> Looking you know back I mean? and forth. Yeah, like I'm going to break my neck. Oh, right Hunter didn't want the middle spot because she... <laughs> She has to hold the mic, which means she can't use her hands. She's a big hand talker. Big hand talker. I know. If you guys. So if, this is like handcuffs for me. Like this is like not chill. If but you we'll haven't back. tuned into the YouTubes yet or like the videos, please just quickly watch this one yeah. because we look ridiculous. And then just know how miserable I am with my <laughs> crisscross applesauce. With my oh hands, my like, holding a cinder block. <laughs> okay, heavy. it is really heavy. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do a super zoom on that. Yeah, please do. <laughs> uh, Crotch uh, shot. Whew, it's hot. It's hot. Okay. Two well, hot takes. Mm -hmm. Today, though, it's not two hot takes. Three bitches. Oh, whoa. It's three piping hot <laughs> it takes. just blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> This isn't the first time the channel's had three, but... Oh. I know, but I didn't realize that it needed to be reworked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole title, the whole show is, is kaput at this point. Yeah. Yep. Just okay. the whole thing away. <laughs> well, blazer's coming off. Let's get into this. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Blazer's off. And welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. Temp Asterisk three. Temporarily three <laughs> today. I'm your host, Morgan. I'm Alejandra. And I'm Lauren. The three of us have been friends for quite some time. Alejandra and Lauren actually went to high school together. Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Woo! Glory days. Go Eagles. Lauren and I met in college. And I actually met Alejandra for the first time in college as well. Mm -hmm. But she was moving to California, mm -hmm. like as, right as I was meeting her. And I just remember being like, you're going to love L.A. Mm -hmm. I remember I was like, what? How do you know? And Wait, you know, when did you guys meet? I don't remember that. I thought you met once we moved out mm -hmm. here. No. My apartment. Was it your apartment? Mm -hmm. I was going to say somebody's apartment. Um, <laughs> some random. Some random. Some um, random girl. But at the time, you were. I was kind of random. Girl. To me, not to the world. But um, yeah, we. I think I was there with Sarah Nelson. 
Mm. Yeah, it was she, my Sarah Nelson mm. days. Yeah. And so I was at your apartment and I was moving, like, I think within weeks, honestly. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my last hurrahs. And so you were like, you're going to love L.A. I have, like, family out there. My dad lives out there. Yeah. Uh, like, And it's one of those things where she was saying, you know, I'll come out. We'll go out. It'll be fun. And you're like, okay. Sure. It'll sure. never happen, but love yeah. it. <laughs> and then, sure enough, you moved out here. I actually come out. And then I was at in college when both of them moved out, Lauren and Morgan, and they came out, and it's funny, Morg or Lauren, I think you always say, like, you didn't think I'd actually hang out no, with you guys. No, because me and Morgan had just graduated college, and Alejandra was in her senior year in a sorority in Los Angeles. So I just figured she had her own thing going on, and me and Morgan were going to move out here, and we're going to be like these old farts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Alejandra, no, she welcomed us in. We were college <laughs> girls in L.A., pretending yeah. to be <laughs> we went to all of the college bars that everyone went to and just extended our college experience out in LA mm -hmm. James Beach yeah yeah, yeah. Where, some places in in Playa now we're all working women mm -hmm. with careers yeah so which is why we're here to talk about work yeah. as fun as it is we just can't get away from it <laughs> we just love to talk about it love to talk about it if you are on YouTube, you're probably going to see this and be like, wow, these girls are switching outfits a shit ton. We did change. We recorded over two days. Just an FYI. I have no idea how I'm going to edit this in the order. So this actually might go first, and then you'll see the blazers and whatever. Oh, wow. We have, blazers. we have the blazers. We have the blazers. So we're all over the, all over the place with clothes this episode. So we did two days of recording. And yeah. That is why you see a lot of outfits if you're watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We're starting off today with listener write-ins. Okay, so for this one. Am I the asshole for me, 22 female, ending an engagement and four-year relationship because my fiancé, 24 male, slept with his little sister's best friend? This is a write-in? Yeah. <sighs> Fuck that. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's not happy. Tell me more. Yeah. My fiance and I had a big fight because he was stressed out about starting a new job and he took out the frustration on me. Well, we made up, but I found out shortly after he admitted to me while he was drunk, he had had sex with his little sister's best friend, who is also a teen mom, and multiple times. The night of the fight we had, we were not broken up either at this point. We just had a fight. So I end things, but he made me feel like it was all my fault for the fight and for ending things, and I still love him, but I just can't forgive that he cheated. So am I the asshole? No. No. What? I, would, I wouldn't be able to forgive that ever. He no. cheated and then yeah. kind of low-key gaslighted he her. He gaslighted her up. Is it yeah. gaslighted or gaslit? Mm. Both. Gaslit her. <laughs> either. Gas gas I was just wondering. He's a gaslighter. Gaslighter. But he gas gaslit her. her. Mm. There we go. There it is. Yeah. He gaslit her, and I'm not cool with that. And no. No, what? You're not the asshole. He cheated. Yeah. He dug his own grave. Yeah. It's That it's would make odd. me so sick, too. And then I wouldn't... I, and then you the, still have to see this chick. Yeah. It's yeah. not no, like she's, she's always around. never... Yeah. No. Also, it's wait, your little sister's best friend. She's like a Jordan Woods here. Like, what it, is the friend... Is the sister still friends with this chick? I'm sure. Especially now, like, because they're broken up, it doesn't really matter. I would not want to be friends principle. with someone that did that. Yeah. 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 This would make me sick. And I would, you, the thing is, is that like your relationship, if you decided to forgive him, you're going to have to deal with that throughout your entire relationship. Yeah. Like it's just not, it's not going to go away. Like, yeah. yes, it'll get better. But like that is, that's, that cuts really deep, especially he slept with her. You guys weren't even broken up. Mm -hmm. And it was your little, his little sister's best friend, a best friend who likely is still going to be in the picture forever. Slash the little sister is also probably going to give you PTSD when you see her. Like yeah. the yeah. whole thing is. is just like, yeah, it's just, I think it's, it's too far gone in my opinion. Yeah. Like I get finding a new job is super stressful. Like I literally feel like I'm going to barf on the first day of my new job. <laughs> like it's work and new job anxiety is real. But yeah, if this is like the reason he cheated, how is he going to handle any other fight or issue in their relationship going forward? Like, yeah. you have, like, some frustrations come out over you starting a new job yeah. and you go and cheat. Mm -hmm. with Imagine someone. having kids and yeah. the frustrations there. I don't know, you guys. I, like, can't relate to this. Are you that nervous? I'm excited to start a new job. Oh, God, I I'm, get so nervous. I feel like the stress kicks in once you've started the job and now the expectations. You're fr it's like a first day of school. I feel like I'm also pretty neutral. terrible for you're, me. You're nervous, but I'm not like, yeah. start a fight with my 
boyfriend and cheat mm-hmm. on him nervous, you know? That's, but that, yeah. And yeah. like, I don't think like, I don't know why, maybe, I don't know what kind of job it is. She doesn't yeah, mention, but it's like, if this is really the straw that broke the camel's back for you to cheat, right. yeah. bro. I'm not saying it's a non-stressful event, but like, it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm going into brain surgery tomorrow and I just yeah. couldn't handle it. You it's know? Not- or like losing, I've seen a Reddit post where someone lost their twin brother oh. and he was, he didn't cheat on her, but he was grieving so much and mm-hmm. she didn't know how to help. And yeah. she, and it was just, he completely shut down. Yeah, He completely yeah. shut down. And so it's like that, those are different situations where people aren't in their right mind, but like to, but the night start a new, new job. job that just is so ridiculous yeah yeah it's not an excuse right no that this one's weird i mean nothing's an excuse to cheat right if you have a relationship where you agree not to cheat then nothing's an excuse ever but. yeah i also wonder too like there had to be some sort of like lead up to them having sex like oh my little sister's been best friend she's always been around like maybe but it also could have just been a drunk night and then she was there yeah True. that but like fuck her for yeah. no fuck her. Like you know he's engaged and has been with his fiance for four <gasps> so years. Shitty. I forgot they were engaged. Mm-hmm. Engaged oh. four years too. Engaged. So shitty. Wow. Yeah, I don't like this one. But I mean, mm-hmm. again, if she's willing to overlook it, everyone is different. If she yeah. thinks she can handle it and get over it, then sure, never say never. But right. it sounds like she's sounds like she's on our page where it's yeah. just it's too not far worth gone. It. Yeah. Okay, last listener write in. I think my coworker wants to replace me. I thought you were going to say fuck me. This is not where I saw that going. Mm -hmm. She wants to fuck somebody. My coworker wants to replace me. Mm -hmm. Let's hear about that. Me and my husband are approaching our four-year anniversary, and we have a little girl. So the beginning of the year, I started a new job. At my job, I made friends with a coworker because she was dating one of our family friends. After a few months, they broke up. So to show her we weren't just friends because she was dating a mutual friend, we invited her over a few times. Everything seemed great until one specific event happened, setting a weird pace for our relationship. One night, we had a party and offered for her to stay the night in our guest room so she wouldn't have to get an Uber home. The same night, we invited our new neighbors over to meet them. I'll come back to that. Anyways, everyone was pretty wasted and I got a little too crazy and decided to call it early. I left her and my husband alone thinking nothing about it. I trust my husband. Well, after a few hours, I woke up to my husband still not in bed. So I went looking for him. I found him laying on our floor in the living room with my coworker on the couch chatting. Something didn't seem right. So I told them they should both go to bed because me and her had to work in the morning. Next morning, my husband made breakfast for all of us, and I was feeling hungover, so I was sluggish. She was asking me questions about my husband and what he does around the house. After breakfast, I had put my daughter on the floor to walk around and play. She started to get into a junk drawer, and before I could get up, my coworker had grabbed her. She was acting very motherly to my child, but I thought it was because she has a son and was trying to lend a helping hand. A few days passed, and at work, she would talk to me about that night and would talk about my husband like they were lifelong friends, saying things like, quote, oh, you know how he can be, or that's just him for you. Ew. (laughs) Just very weird things for someone who just met him. I later went to a nail salon with my new neighbor, who pointed out that night she had noticed my coworker flirting with my husband and being too close. Wait, that night? So this is the only time they've ever met. And the person at the nail salon was there? I'm mm-hmm, confused. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was okay. like a like a, a grill out or some okay. sort of little yeah. party gathering. Okay. A little kickback. Yeah, so the neighbor noticed that the friend and the husband, like the friend was being flirty mm-hmm. and too touchy or too close, yeah. whatever it is. After hearing that, I told everything to my husband. He agreed that was weird, but he hadn't noticed anything that night but believed me and said he would distance himself from her. I invited her over a few more Distance times. Distance her, like he, they've only met once. Yeah, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Do they text? Like, that would be weird. No mention of texting. Okay. Um, no mention of other interactions okay. so far. Okay, sorry, go on. Like maybe he distanced himself future tense. Got it. Like okay. I'll make sure. Mm. I invited her over a few more times without my husband there to see if it was just her personality to be that friendly. We had great conversations about life and all, but whenever my husband was brought into the topic, she would act different. 
again, like she knew him. I invited her again to a small kickback with friends, my husband being too busy with his friends for me to worry about her. Another friend noticed as well that she would rush to my daughter before me. If my daughter cried, she'd be right there holding her and comforting her. I could barely take a step before she'd pass me to get to my daughter first. I was borderline disturbed. One part of me thought she was just helping, but another part felt something different. The last visit we had was when I asked if she'd watch my daughter for an hour. I had an emergency and I couldn't find anyone other than her. She agreed, and when I got back, everything was normal. We had another great chat about just everything going on at work and our lives when she mentioned a dream she had. She said she dreamt of her dream man. What she described to me was basically my husband. I politely sort of kicked her out and told my husband about it. He finds everything strange as well, but agrees with me he doesn't know what it means. It's a fine line she's dancing on between flirting and being friendly. She tells me a lot at work that I have the perfect family and the prettiest little girl and how she wishes she had someone like my husband. Mm. I don't know what to do. Um, stop being friends with her. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that when you feel that in your gut, you're, it's a gut. You instinct. should probably follow that. Yeah. yeah. It's a gut instinct for sure. And I, I am a big believer, like trust your gut. If you feel something oh, is yeah. off with someone, you're probably, you're probably yep. right. Like my gut has never failed me. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. I can feel things from a mile away. Yeah. It's wild. And I don't even have to be there for these like things. Yeah. I just be like, I can feel this going on, you know? My spidey senses are very in tune with people Same. and their character. Same. Well, mine isn't even their character. It's like their behavior. Okay. Like I'm a pattern recognizer uh -huh. and I can pick up on things before people tell me things. And so like I see things coming. It's it's very weird. It's almost like a hypersensitivity yeah. to the way. I notice when people start to omit things. I notice when people start to act a certain way that isn't consistent with their previous behavior. I just, I don't know. I yeah. feel things like mm -hmm. in my gut. It's, it's weird. So I always, I'm a huge proponent for listen to your gut. It's very clear that this woman, your coworker, has some type of fascination with your family, whether yeah. it's your husband, your family dynamic in general, your daughter, something as weird is going on. And I think that's somebody that you need to keep at the furthest distance from your family. If you yeah, have an emergency, done. like don't ever let her watch your daughter ever again. If it's that big of an emergency, like Hire bring, someone. bring Just take your her daughter with you. or you got to reschedule whatever, you know, don't bring her over to your house. Don't even talk to her at work if it's not work related. Yeah. In my opinion, just, I would be the same way. Don't ever talk about your husband. If she talks about your husband, just be like, you know, I'd rather focus on work things. My husband. Yeah. Sorry, I'm really busy right now. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to get back to you yeah. on that. Or just confront Blow it. it off. Be like, I'm uncomfortable with talking about my husband. Like, we're talking about work. Yeah. My husband has nothing to do with our job. So. Keep like, it very professional. Job, yeah. Why? Just to rewind, too. I, I would be really annoyed if my husband was laying on the floor and this girl was laying on the couch and they were just talking that late up. at night. Yeah. And yeah. Weird. And no one else is around and they're just having like this like late night heart to heart. I'd be like, I'm sorry. That's What's just that not about? appropriate. Like no. it's no. And like, what is that about? Yeah. Like why? Mm -hmm. You just met this woman. Why do you feel the need yeah. to like spend hours out in a living room late at night drunk with her? Mm hmm. Like, yeah. you should be in bed with your wife I don't at that, that point. At like, it's just I'd be, weird. I'd be pissed at that point. I'd be mad at my husband, too. And I'd be like, don't. Yeah. It, that's going. Don't make me uncomfortable. Well, also, like, even if his intentions were so pure, it's like you're giving her the wrong idea. Yeah, exactly. True. So don't do that. <laughs> well, and she's obviously, like, perceiving it, like, He's in a different in way. Me. Like, yeah. oh, I had a dream about my dream guy. Mm -hmm. And, like, basically, I wish I had someone like your husband. It's either she's trying to make her feel uncomfortable or she has no awareness. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost like the dream thing. If I had a dream and my dream man in my dream was, like, Jeff or Justin, basically, I would probably not bring that dream up to you. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. You don't need to share it. Or think that I want their mans. You know what I mean? It's one of those dreams you just don't share. You just bury. I had this dream that this guy, 5'11", exactly, measured him with a tape measure and everything. Yeah. And he's this music <laughs> producer. He's a Minnesota <laughs> transplant <laughs> yeah. in L.A. 
<laughs> dream man. Yeah, <laughs> dream it would be weird. Man, and yeah. you're just like, it would be weird. <laughs> kidding? Well, I wonder too, just with the way that she's kind of seeking out her daughter. Yeah. And like trying mm-hmm. to insert herself in a motherly role yeah. to this little girl. I almost wonder if, she, like, she didn't mention her being married, having right, a boyfriend, right. recent breakup, so no single context. mom. So I wonder if she's almost like, wow, he's a great dad. Mm-hmm. I want that for my little boy. Yeah. Like, yeah. and trying to swoop in. Mm-hmm. And I have seen something similar on Reddit, and I don't really remember the full context, but it was something along those lines of, like, my friend would always comment what a great dad my husband was, and they had an affair. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm just like, hmm. do you, well, I hate to bring this show up because it's so creepy, but The Undoing, I know you've watched it. Oh, yeah. I love that show. It I just, never saw it. It's just making oh, me think. Oh, Morgan, you would love it. <laughs> I know Nicole Kidman, right? Yeah. Yes. We've talked about this on the show before. Watch I think. it well, tonight. One of, one of the chicks, she basically um, has like a fascination with the other chick. I, I guess I, I don't want to give anything what? away. Yeah, I'm I'm lost. So you know the girl who she's like follows around Nicole Kidman. Yes. Yeah, and she's just kind of obsessed like, with her. Yeah, she's obsessed with her, yeah. and and it's. I feel like you need to say that this is spoiler alert, but like it's because she's banging her husband, mm-hmm. and oh my, there's so many shows like this. It's um, so creepy to me, but she like follows her around. She's in the locker room naked, and she's like, "Touch my boobs. oh yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, weird. Yeah, that was yeah. So weird. no, I just saw a TikTok for another show too, and. This lady befriends her husband's mistress. Oh. But the husband doesn't know this is her new friend, and the girl doesn't know that that's her... A f- Wait, her hus- who befriended who? Oh. The husband's wife befriended his... Or the his, mitri- the his mistress. The mistress. mistress. So yeah. knowingly. Knowingly. Oh. She, like, found out they were having sex and then met her and was just like, oh, let's be friends, and, like, started hanging out with her. It's a weird... I wish there was a study on this because that's I've heard of that happening a lot. There has to be some psychology behind, I don't know, feeling like you're closer to that person, the man. I could see that. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I've seen yeah. it firsthand two times now in my own life, so there's got to be something to it. Well, and we've had stories where guys do it, too. Yeah. Where the guy, like, the one story where the girl was like, my boyfriend is obsessed with my ex... And sought out the ex boyfriend to become friends uh, with him. That's right. I and like was story. obsessed with him, wanted to be this ex boyfriend. Mm-hmm. That Reddit story. Couldn't I be me. <laughs> I yeah. like shit on all my. Well, my all my exes texts. are. <laughs> Just kidding. If you're Red Sex and you're listening to this. <laughs> no, but I mean, Justin's ex is, Justin's ex is certifiably shitty. Like, yeah. what she did was fucking terrible. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. I don't like, really have an opinion on Jeff's ex. Like zero opinion, honestly. I yeah. think that's pretty healthy. Yeah, I think. that's healthy. I, and I actually don't really have an opinion. Yeah. She just like seems like she wants to like I don't know, I'm just not gonna say it. She, she <laughs> I just, don't know now. No, she she just I've sent you some of her stuff. Her yeah. Very political views. Mm. She's she's uh she's super She's like, a little out there. Yeah, she's out there. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I took a drink so I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I think it's healthy to not look into exes, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Jerry came back I, with a robe. I still don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you doing, Jerry? Jerry. My dad keeps, like, interrupting our episode. I want to take a picture of him. And, he oh, yeah. T- oh, my oh. God. He ran away. <laughs> oh, but man. he's now wearing. Now I know how to make him shoe. He's wearing a bathrobe. <laughs> and he's been just pure chaos while we've been trying to record this. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to. He wants a fourth mic. I can he tell. Does. He, he wants does. He wants a spot it, yeah. on the outside. Every single in. day, he asks me, "When am I coming back on?" Oh, put him back on. I have an episode planned. Put but him in the game. It's another pretty gross one, and I think after the basic hygiene, we need to give everyone a break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's pretty nasty. Oh damn. So okay. he'll be back. He'll I wasn't phased by the hygiene one. Like people were like, I couldn't finish it. I was gagging. I was like, This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was grossed out, but like. I also work in a hospital, so like yeah. I've had people poop on me. Yes, yeah, same. So in sales, I just have people shit all over me <laughs> <laughs> all day, every day. All day, every day. Someone, <laughs> someone peed on my leg the other day. Oh damn! Yeah, work every day is it's a it's not for the faint. It's a dirty job. Yeah. Well, that's that for the listener stories. I think cut that friend off. No, no more friends. No yeah, more. Yeah, don't just keep her as a coworker. Yeah, it's like, and if she's not this like long term best friend, if if she was someone who was 
you went way back with her yeah maybe have a discussion like hey it makes me feel a little uncomfortable right and yeah. then you guys can get into it and see how it goes from there but it sounds like she's not someone that's super important and not really i wouldn't really it's not really worth having yeah. the conversation yeah I yeah agree. i can see that for yeah. sure sounds like you should follow your gut mm -hmm. absolutely every time on to the reddit Am I the asshole for pretending to get fired when customers get a temper with me? <laughs> Damn. Wait. Please continue. Where does this person work? Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I'm, I'm a high literally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a high schooler with a weekend job at a coffee shop. My coworkers who work weekends are James, the owner's son, who also goes to my school, and he's a shift manager. But not a real formal thing. He's a friendly guy. Danielle, a college student who sometimes works weekends, too. So, sometimes customers will come in and just be angry about such little stuff. Like, literally blow up about nothing. I don't know if they're in a bad mood already and looking for someone to take it out on or what, but it's a lot. Like, how sad, so you have to be a grown-ass man taking your anger out on high school kids and college kids. So, James and I were joking about having a little fun with them and hopefully getting them off our backs. So one day, I was at work, and some guy was having a temper tantrum about how we don't make the coffee hot enough, which I couldn't do a thing about because I gave it to him right out of the machine. So coffee shop, restaurant, service, re like Got it. industry. So James comes in and was like, sir, is there a problem here? And the guy started ranting at him too. So he was just like, OP, this is unacceptable. You're fired. <laughs> Oh my So wait, gosh. this is his so friend or is this the owner? Yeah, the this friend. This is the owner. <laughs> oh. Like the owner's son. The owner's son. Who's the manager. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, but they're friends. Yeah, yeah. So they were like joking about like, we got to do something about this. What I happens? love this. I love this. I started acting real sad. Like, no, please don't fire me. My family needs the money. Oh. I need this job. <laughs> These please. are actors. <laughs> <laughs> and he played up being a hard ass, telling me to take off my apron and leave. The angry guy started to backtrack, like, it isn't that big of a problem. You don't need to fire her over it. I didn't mean it. And James was like, no, we pride ourselves on the best customer service. Oh, my gosh. Of course, after all the drama, I still had my job. We were just acting. And we've done it a couple times. Whenever a customer will lose their temper at Danielle or I, James will storm in and fire us. And almost every time the person who had come in angry will apologize and say that they didn't mean it. It's kind of satisfying and that, that they didn't mean it. So brilliant. Yeah, I wow. love it. So brilliant. Smart. And I there's been it. so the many times in my high school jobs that like I exactly had that same feeling. I'm like, you're a grown ass adult. I'm just doing my job and you're freaking out about absolutely nothing. Yeah. What is going on in your life that you think that it's okay to push around this innocent little 15 year old worker? Yeah. And that would have been the best move. I love it. Not the asshole. Oh. Yeah, so she goes, it's kind of satisfying making people realize their actions might actually yeah. have consequences. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I was telling my friends from school about this, and a few of them thought it was a mean prank to let someone go away thinking they'd gotten someone who desperately needs the money fired. No, they'll no. correct their attitude. Maybe they'll change and won't do it again. Yes. I Yeah, but I, I do understand how the whole – the second layer of being like, my family needs this. Like, that's a bit much. I love it. <laughs> True. I Honestly, though, I... <laughs> little I, bit of overkill. Little overkill. Little overkill, but also, like, I'm not even a big fan of pranks. Like, I actually generally... Yeah. I don't like pranks. Yeah, I remember but, the prank episode. Oh, I hate them. Yeah. But this one, I'm like, okay. I think it's a little bit of karma. Like, mm -hmm. like don't be so quick to, like, fucking flip out at people and be, oh, yeah. a, be a Karen like this. Like, mm -hmm. I think this is the best way to handle future Karens mm -hmm. because it's like Karens aren't easily like diffused and negated from their actions. Mm -hmm. So it's like if they literally got such instant results, like, okay, fine, you're fired, leave. They'd be like, I have nothing else to bitch about. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I really, I was down for this one. No, I yeah. love it. I love it too. Yeah, top comment. Not the asshole. That's a perfect way of dealing with hostile customers. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some really ridiculous reactions or people that will come in. And, and so I just, I love, I love this. This yeah. is so funny. Uh, like working as a flight attendant, the things people would get mad about me for. Like, and I'm just like, I'm sorry. I have absolutely no control over anything that's happening. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm just as much being terrorized by this yeah. as you are. Because I have to sit on this plane even longer now and yeah. deal with you. Yeah. 
Well, and I've noticed myself too. Sometimes when I'm really frustrated with a company or a brand or whatever, I'm and I'm calling through all these different numbers to get to customer service, mm-hmm. and I'm on hold for so long. And by the time I finally get to the customer customer service, they're like, "We can't do this." And I notice my tone and my body language, and I'm just getting pissed off. But yeah. then I'm like, "Don't be mean to them." Yeah, because they're just doing their job. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't keep you on hold purposely for the past forty five minutes. You know, so yeah. it's like. It's easy to forget sometimes that it's not, I don't know, that you. Yeah. Ugh, sometimes they're not doing their job, though. Like, <laughs> well, sometimes, no, sometimes they're not. They're not. That I get mad or short tempered when I, somebody is so clearly inept. Yeah. I have very low tolerance for ineptness, and I'm trying to work on that because, yes, yeah, sometimes it's really not their fault. But when people are just very blatantly being lazy and not exploring the routes that they yeah, can, true. that's where I get frustrated, Same. especially yeah. if I've been on hold for a long time, Same. especially if this is my 10th time calling in this week. Mm-hmm. That's where I get really frustrated. Mm-hmm. I think on the flip side of that, so I recently had to go to Lululemon to return. <laughs> <laughs> we saw your tweets. <laughs> Fuck Lululemon. We know what happened, but <laughs> you know. Wait, okay, maybe I've had two different experiences. What oh, one of you guys? One? Yeah, you oh, tweeted then. about it. Yeah, what Lululemon? I've Wouldn't they sh- not take your line pants back because they got bills? <laughs> <laughs> I always try to like work the system there. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a pair of like shitty pants that I have the same pair of pants in four different like four different ones. They're um, the all the right places crop and pant. They're the most incredible leggings in the no world. No free promo. No free promo. They're amazing. <laughs> but the one pair I had were like totally defective and like stretched out. The retention wasn't there. So I brought it into a store and the girl was like, these are like eight years old. And I'm like, no, they're not. Oh, they weren't? No, they weren't even that old. And she's like, well, I can't take them back. So I fucking get on the chat and I'm like, your associate was so rude, blah, 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 blah. And they took it back. So... Totally separate experience. So I go to Lululemon again a couple weeks ago, and I ordered this pair of leggings online, and I had a gift card. But I I owed, like, a difference of, like, $36. They were, like, some fucking reflective, stupid-ass ones that were more money. Stupid-ass. And so I pay the extra money on, like, Apple Pay or, like, PayPal or something like that, where it was, like, you don't actually have a card number. It just shows up as, like, Apple Pay or PayPal. Mm -hmm. And the girl at the register was like, actually, I can't return that on, I can't return that money from you. So like all of your money is going to go on a gift card. And I'm like, I used to work at Lululemon. I know how this works, sweetie. Like you can actually return the total amount onto any card. It does not even have to be the same card. The registers don't work like that. They just fuck with you. So then if you don't have that card, they're like, oh, well, we have to give you a gift card because mm. then technically the money doesn't leave the company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they're fucking con artists. And I said that. I was like, honestly, like, can you just put it on this card? Like multiple times. And I was like, I really don't want that much on a gift card. Like this is my money and I need it now. Uh, oh, well, how about when you went Jane, to Saint Jane. Laurent? Yes. Your story You're triggering the, me. Yeah. yeah. Saint Laurent, YSL, as the kids call it these days, they... <laughs> Do not. First of all, the receipt says like returns are accepted within 30 days. However, yeah. it is not explicitly stated that the return is actually going to be in the in store a credit, not a refund. Oh, my God. What is this? Forever 21? Yeah. And right? Forever 21 updated oh, their me. policy. Right. I, did they? Yeah. You can now get your money back from them. And these are like two, three. This $4, is a luxury designer. Yeah. Yes. Tacky. Yes. Very much so. Tacky. Tacky. So I go in there. Like an idiot it gets with worse. Lauren. Oh, yeah. So so I buy a purse and I bring it home and I don't love it. So I take it back and I get store credit. All right. I end up exchanging it for another yeah. purse. And then I, okay, I'm just going to make this long story short. I needed to go back in because I was returning something. At this point, I know their policy. I know I'm only going to get credit. I have to take the L. So I go into St. Laurent. I purposely go. This is going to be such an L.A. problem, but you'll get it if you live in L.A. I, we live <laughs> in like you know, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills area. So the one that's the closest to us Rodeo is Drive. Rodeo Drive. Yeah. But everyone knows Rodeo Drive is a zoo. So if I can avoid it, I will. So I go to the Beverly Center and I purposefully, I'm running so many errands these, this day. It's like my errand day. Everyone knows in LA, errand day takes like seven hours <laughs> to do like three things. So I run to the Beverly Center. Literally and so bad. It's the worst. Don't even get me started. I go to the Beverly Center. I'm so happy. It's my last errand. And I go in there and I'm like, hey, I already know you're only going to do customer service. I just need to return this. Can I get a gift card? And she's like, mm, 
see, I can't because we're out of gift cards. And I was like, that's Excuse fine. Excuse me, what? I then know. that's on you and you need to return it. Exactly. To I go, me. I have a customer profile with you. So just go ahead and make a note. Credit the account. I owe you whatever you got to do. Credit my account and we'll figure it out later when you're, you have gift cards. When you're again, more capable which seems of handling illegal. your job. Because, right? Because it's like if you I think that is illegal. It There's got to be something with the Better Business because Bureau or whatever. Yeah. If you can't offer me money dollars back. And you're saying my only option is in-store credit and you can't offer me the vehicle that will give me that credit. That seems illegal. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you mean? You don't you put it on my account. She's like, I have to give you a physical gift card. Rodeo has tons. And I'm like, <laughs> I purposely so annoying. didn't go to Rodeo. I came here. And she was like, you know, I'm just trying to help. And, you know, I felt really bad because I was very short tempered with her. And I was like, is this, I think I said like, are you Kohl's? Like, why can't you put this? <laughs> Well, I, I said it's 2021 and you're living in like 2010. Yeah. Give me an e-gift card. Write me an IOU. Put it on my account. Come on. You're sophisticated. And Or like, at this point, I'm here. Give me the fucking Accommodate money me. Yeah. Write it on a post-it me. note and have your manager sign it and date it. I don't know what we got to do, but we got to do something. Because why is this my problem now? Yeah, it's not. And like you just said, the customers there, this is a first first world problem. You're spending good money yeah. to shop there. So the fact that they make it so difficult for you. That's, that's a, that is the exact emotion I had with Lululemon. Yeah. And it's like, it's not even about the, how much money you yeah. spend. It's about the lack of customer service. Customer attentiveness. Yeah. And here we are like a customer service, like worker. And it's <laughs> like, we've all had customer service jobs. Yeah. yeah. Like a um, lot. Yeah. Well, we and all I, are I, still in customer service yeah. jobs. They I think all that's why are. it helps us have like a more level understanding because we've had those asshole and customers that treat, treat you horribly just because they had a bad day. Yeah. And then we've also on the flip side had instances where it's so frustrating where it feels like they're just not trying right. they just don't care right yeah. they just like there's things they could do to help you out but they right. just won't right Absolutely. it's so frustrating and in that moment i actually that girl was really sweet shout out if she, for some reason she's listening she was super <laughs> sweet she redeemed herself she was amazing but she can't help the policy i mean at the end you really say coals I I like said, a, that's like mean girls you i either say coals <laughs> I, I i think i said coals or jc penny that's I, so said, well, I did, I did that's compare so them to a department store. Oh my god! Because I'm like, this just isn't right. Yeah. But that's the, the thing is, is that Coles and JC Penney wrong with would Kohl's. never do that. But no. yeah, they would never do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. They're way better. Yeah. yeah. I would have been. I would have been absolutely. What do you mean you can't give me a gift card? Freaking have them ship you one right now. I'll wait. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. I I'd rather sit here and wait and go grab like a coffee. Then drive to Rodeo. Yeah. I, like, that's how unbearable Rodeo can yeah. be. And you have to pay for parking at both places. So fuck at, you. Yeah. At that point, they should have, like, the company should have paid for an Uber. Like, to be like, here, go deliver these to our other store. Or a courier service Something. or whatever. Yeah. I, I just don't understand why the manager can't come out and say, I'm going to write a little, like, no. I'm going to sign and date it. I'm certifying that as soon as we get the gift cards in stock, we're going to call you or we're going to mail you one. Yeah. I'd be sketched out by that, though. I wouldn't yeah. trust it. I know. So now I have a gift card with a good amount of money on. Oh, and my God. I guard it like it's cash, but I actually don't know where it is at this very moment. Damn. But I think it's in my room somewhere. But I have to use that at some point. So if anyone Ooh. sees a cute purse there, Ooh. send it my way. Oh, on that note, on wow. That note. We gotta go, you got to go find that gift card. I know. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm trying to give you a crazy one. I mean, work is work is just more zen than a lot of a lot of our other topics, you know, and I think people needed a little a little chill break. I didn't I've I've endured <laughs> I've endured chaos. your your chill stories for too long. I need something crazy. Okay. Well, I want you to knock my socks off. <laughs> You're not wearing any. <laughs> my slippers. <laughs> okay. So this next one, I had a hard time deciding if I wanted to keep it for the work episode or the upcoming body issues. Mm. But here we go. Yaddy, 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 yeah, yaddy. prep yourselves. Okay. Am I the asshole for calling my coworker chunky? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably. Sorry. After, <laughs> unless it's a little, uh, unless it's a bulldog. Yeah, unless it's a bulldog, a baby bulldog. <laughs> I'm gonna go with yes. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Am I the asshole for calling my coworker chunky after she repeatedly calls me slim and makes references to my weight after I asked her multiple times not to? I have a female coworker who repeatedly calls me out regarding my weight. I'm 5'9", 115 pounds and very thin. She is very overweight. 
All the time, she makes comments about my weight. She doesn't call me by my name. She calls me Slim. And I even heard her say one time, go ask, toothpick. And she has said stuff like, you need some meat on your bones and you need to eat. I have only worked there eight days. I have asked her very nicely to stop. Yesterday, I asked her to stop calling me Slim again. And she basically said, it's her mouth and she can say what she wants. Oh. <laughs> wow. Today, when she said, morning, Slim, I replied. <laughs> this, is, this is chaos. Okay. You wanted crazy. I did. Today, when she said, morning, Slim, I replied, morning, Chunky. <laughs> And she got upset and actually started crying. I'm sorry. Don't well dish deserved. it out. If you well can't deserved. take the it's heat. It's my mouth. Yeah, well deserved. Stay out of the kitchen if yeah, you can't take the exactly. heat. And, that, and she was being nice. She could have said something else, like a like whale or just something mean. Like she said chunky. That's cute. Good morning, obese bitch. <laughs> like, yeah. She could have like really been really, really, really <laughs> degrading. And I think like there's... <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> obese bitch I didn't think it was that funny but fuck I just you said it so <laughs> just picturing a setting like that yeah, just casual someone's walking with their briefcase <laughs> and you over here <laughs> oh that was that sent me I'm crying oh, okay. I'm crying right. so, so what else happened and she got really upset and started crying. Oh. Just like me right now. <laughs> Everybody here at work, only six of us total, is saying I'm wrong and I should apologize because being called fat is different than being called skinny because being called skinny is a compliment. I said as long as she calls me slim, I will call her chunky. And now I'm the bad person. Am I the asshole if I don't apologize? The owner slash manager has completely ignored the situation saying it's a quote, high school issue, and we should figure it out. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, I honestly think it's fair. She asked her not to call her something. Like, if everyone has yeah. a right, that's exactly why we have pronouns. Everyone has a right to be like, hey, I prefer to go by they, them. And so it's just like, for this girl to say, you're really trying to address <laughs> Yeah, her. you're really, wow. Cam Lauren you, is um, campaigning right now. You were really grasping at straws <laughs> with I that. Really, I want... You to watch my reaction. I'm like biting my tongue trying not to laugh. Just get it out, Lauren. Oh my God. Okay. I was you just, did this to yourself. Yeah, I, I, okay. Don't even give me that I, exasperated. Okay, look. I felt I felt so guilty because in one of the podcast episodes, I used the incorrect pronouns when we were talking about um, a non-binary pregnant friend. And I felt so bad afterwards. And so I told Morgan, I was like, I want to address it because I don't want people to think I did it on purpose. Um, it was just completely went over my head. Every single time Morgan said they, them, I thought she she was talking about the couple. I just, it was an accident. So I was like, I want to address it. And Morgan and all Hunter are like, just do it if it comes naturally. So and she so, bit. So I just really grasped Trump. To be natural. Uh, yeah. you, uh, you made that work so you could sneak that in there. Yeah. Okay, but regardless, everyone has a right to be asked to be referred to as something. Well, it's so, not even. Or just like, don't call me. A derogatory term. Yeah, don't characterize me by my weight well and and if she yeah. says hey like i don't like when you call me slim just like if you were to be like i don't like when you call me my old nickname mm -hmm. you know i like my i prefer my name you have every right to expect that people will refer to you by yeah. what you want to be it's referred your to it's your name like no one wants to like you said like no one wants to be called something they don't want to be called right. yeah. this is like this is very harmful like what if she had a medical condition yeah. that is the reason why she can't gain weight. Yeah, absolutely. Or what if she had an eating disorder? Yeah. yeah. And this was very triggering. Absolutely. Or I, like I was, I was a very, very thin child. So my nickname, ironically, was Plaquita, which means skinny in Spanish, like mm -hmm. skinny little one. And my family to this day, you might hear my family members call me Flaca, which mm -hmm. is skinny. Mm -hmm. And to a lot of, I mean, it's loving. I was never offended by it, but I was a really skinny child. In high school, I was actually self conscious of how skinny my legs were. I look back and I laugh and I'm like, LOL, I die for those legs. But <laughs> back then, I was very, very self-conscious about my legs. So if someone called me slim or skinny, that would actually 
hurt my self-esteem. And it's hard for people to understand that skinny shaming is still body shaming. Mm Mm-hmm. But I completely it is. agree. It, it is completely just agree. as bad yeah. as it's, fat shaming. It's definitely a hot, it's been a hot topic in, in you know, recent years with yeah. the more body positive movement. And then on the other side, you know, girls coming forward and being like, it's still shaming when you're telling me I'm skinny. Or, it's shaming. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, it goes both ways. Absolutely. I completely agree. And, you know, no one should be subjected to harmful, hurtful comments about who they are. And, You actually said something to me once and Alejandra and you were like, you should never say something to someone Mm. or criticize them if it's something that they can't fix within 10 seconds. And so commenting on people's body, their Mm -hmm. weight, something that is so, yeah, it's it's who they are and who knows what they're battling with or dealing with is just like, don't do it. Right. And the woman here (laughs) being referred to as like chunky, like the woman who's calling her slim, this is so, I mean- if this person, this is so clearly an insecurity. It, yeah, it's I yeah, had the way. same thing happen yeah. to me where someone was like, "Oh, you're a size two or four, or whatever." Like, psh, they kind of like gross, scoffed weird. at it. Yeah, yeah, and it would made me feel bad because I'm like, well, first of all, clothing asked, sizes also like are so they're off. They're so off right. in every brand. No, nothing's consistent. Right. The person who asked me like a, was a bigger size, but what what does that matter? You asked me my size and then scoffed at it. That mm-hmm. doesn't make me feel good. And I know in her head she was thinking, well oh, you little thing kind of, but it doesn't, yeah. you know, it's the same. Can you imagine if I asked her her size and she said like a 12 or a 10? Like, uh, a 12? Said, yeah. Why, what's the difference? Yeah. You're shaming somebody for the size that they yeah. are. I completely agree. And the thing about this woman too is like she told her not to. It's yeah. not like she was calling her slim and it was playful and then she just came out and said, hey, Chunky. No, she said, please don't call me that. And mm-hmm. she said, you don't you're like you're not in charge of what comes out of my mouth. That's yeah. so rude and disrespectful. So it's her mouth and she can say whatever she wants. And yeah. she said, I'm going to continue to call you chunky as long as you call me slim. Yeah. So it's not like she's like, I'm just gonna call this you this forever. She's just making a point. Mm-hmm. Like if I ask you not to do something, if it doesn't make me feel good about myself, my body, my representation, my name, then respect that. Otherwise yeah. I will do the same to you until you stop. Right. Exactly. I think like it's only it. it's only fair. Like we said, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Exactly. And also, like with her saying that, it's like, yeah, you can say whatever you want, but doesn't mean that the other person's going to put up with it, or like you're free from the consequences. Right. Like, if you can't, well, what's the saying? If you mess with the bull, you're going to get, get the, the horns. horns. And she fucked with the wrong person. Yeah, and I guess for me, is she the asshole? That question is kind of twofold for me because mm-hmm. yes, you kind of are calling somebody chunky makes you a little bit of an asshole, but is it you're doing it to make a point to make a point yeah. yeah so i don't think this person is a bad person i don't think this person has bad intentions however calling somebody chunky is still kind of an asshole move yeah regardless i of mean the intention because you don't need to like you don't need to match somebody's disrespect right yeah. you don't have to fight fire with fire i know the bigger person thing is just ignore them when they call you skinny slim whatever you don't even i i started just not responding yeah. So somebody called don't even me, engage. You just don't even look at them. And then sooner or later they get frustrated because to get your attention, they have to work very hard. Mm-hmm. So then they'll just revert back to the name that you actually have. Hopefully. In this case, the bigger person thing to do is it's to, called uh that's called gray rocking. Is it? Yeah. Is it so work? It's, it's typically done with like narcissists, like people that like are trying to get a rise out of you. Oh. And so you just gray rock. Like you ignore them, you become mm-hmm. very boring. Mm-hmm. So then when they stop getting a like when they stop getting a reaction, they're like I'm not entertained by this person anymore. Yes. I can't get a rise out of them. So yes. they just stop. They just stop. And so eventually she's, it's going to be more work than what it's worth. So that would be the bigger person thing to do is just be like, you know what? I'm confident in my body. Maybe you're not, but you know that this person calling you a name is wrong. And you're not going to do it back because you don't like how it feels. Mm-hmm. So you're just going to ignore this person. Maybe to go to HR. That's an HR issue. And just yeah. say, this person is calling me. That is, you're not supposed to comment on other people's like appearance mm-hmm. that way. No. And so that's the bigger person thing to do. However, what she's doing, I don't think is super bad. No. I, well, it's not the grown up thing to do, but. And it's so obvious too that the reason that this person kept calling her slim, skinny, toothpick Mm -hmm. was because she was insecure about herself. And it makes it very clear by the moment she called her chunky that she started crying. Absolutely. It just shows that that came from an insecure place. Definitely. So it's like, yeah, she she was trying to make her feel bad about being skinny to make her feel feel better. Yeah, herself feel better about being a little bit, um, you know, 
overweight, whatever she is. Yeah. There is an edit uh, for more info. We mm. don't have HR. There's only oh. six of us working here. It's a cupcake shop. Mm. We are all regular employees. I went to the owner before I called her Chunky, and I asked him to talk to her because I felt like she was harassing me. That's when he said we can handle it ourselves. That's why I called her Chunky. Mm. I told her to stop calling me Slim, and I didn't like it, and she continued to do it. She didn't stop doing it after I asked her multiple times, and I didn't know what to do besides what she was doing to me. Mm -hmm. She brought up my weight. I brought up hers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not the asshole. No. Top comment. Uh, not the asshole by a long shot. Just because she apparently defines herself by her appearance does not give her the right to define you by yours. Mm -hmm. Objectification sucks. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. Also, that owner is a terrible boss. Absolutely. Yeah, you can right? tell that terrible. it's like a mom and pop. Yeah. Shop, little cupcake shop. No HR just goes to show that they don't really care about like the welfare of their employees. Yeah. Yeah, they could get sued. Yeah. Easily. Real easily. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and he, he still so could like, get sued by like this burnt. girl. <laughs> if she quit, she could still sue him. Yeah. So it's like... Yeah. For creating like a hostile work environment. Yeah. For sure. Someone goes, it's an asshole thing to do, but sometimes you need to be an asshole. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of my logic. Yeah. This next one's interesting, too. Yep, I feel like this wouldn't be so hard to see if OP was getting called Big Rack, D-Cups, Jugs. Yeah. Mm. You can't reduce anyone to an obvious physical characteristic. Yeah. And if it's playful, like the nickname like you had, family. and you're okay with it, yeah. cool. If they're not mm. okay with it, yeah. don't. I've never been to my that. family and been like, I don't like that. Right. It was, it's endearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was in Spanish class, I picked Chapara for my nickname. I've never heard of that name. It means short girl. Chapara? Chapara. Huh. You're in like, you're like, Alondra speaks fluent Spanish. She's like, in what language? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? I mean, there's, there's dialects and different slang for every yeah, you know, Spanish. But that's funny. I just looked it up. Chaparro means dwarf. <laughs> but, because oh, like, we say okay. chato, like chata. Like to say someone's like short, like it, it's chata. Yeah, um, I don't know where. Yeah, Chapara means Chaparro means short person. Chapara is the feminine version used mm -hmm. for women. Yeah, huh. Chapara. That's what go. I went by. But. Beautiful. Did you pick that knowingly? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> it's one thing when you subject it to yourself. Yeah, it's one thing when you do. Other to people yourself. cannot. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My Spanish name, I, I think I went with Margarita, if anyone was wondering. A, a lot word. of people picked that too. <laughs> yeah, because it, it was pretty. And it's beautiful. Yeah, and Margarita's. That's one of the first things people say if if they meet me is like, oh my God, Alejandro is my Spanish name. <laughs> like, wow, you picked that? <laughs> it's oh, that's a compliment. Cool. That's yeah. Awesome. You do have a really pretty name. Nah. I but it's it's funny when other people say that because then like I personally wouldn't pick my name, but the fact that you had a choice and picked it, like that's that's sweet. Okay, well, this one and calling out personal attributes kind of fits into well to another story we have. Oh. Here we go. Let's do it. Would I be the asshole for going to HR about my secret nickname? Throw away because I don't want to be identified. Long story short, I'm a nurse at a hospital, and I go to different floors as my job to help out. I have a pretty common name. Think Jessica, Amanda, etc. There are several nurses with my name throughout the hospital, and sometimes multiple on the same floor. Today I was working on a hall with a new nurse who didn't know me yet. She commented on how it was weird that this floor had three Jessicas on it. She asked me which one I was. I guess she thought I worked just on that floor, and I told her my last name. Then she asked if I knew, quote, Jessica with the nipples that works on float pool. The charge nurse was nearby, and I noticed her eyes get kind of big, and she looked nervous all of a sudden. I was confused for a minute because I had never heard this description, and as far as I knew, I was only Jessica in float pool. It dawned on me that she was referring to me without knowing I'm apparently Jessica with the nipples. <laughs> I, th I mean, that's a good nickname to have. <laughs> I'm kidding. But... I didn't see it going that way. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get away with that in a hospital? I know. Like, even at ADP, no one would do that. No one would nip out? No one would be like Jessica with <laughs> the nipples. How dare they nip out? <laughs> No, that's that's actually like sexual harassment. Exactly. Yeah. Like I don't know how they got how everyone got away with that. Yeah, I agree. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I guess this was just a known thing about me cuz that nurse avoided me like the plague all day and so did everyone else. The charge nurse tried to make it into a joke with me at lunch 
and I laughed to hide my embarrassment, but I am mortified. I had noticed my nipples sparingly in the bathroom mirror and thought it was just a rare thing when cold. I guess my nipples show through my sports bras and scrubs on a regular enough basis that it's become my secret identifier. I told a friend I was thinking about going to HR about this, but they said it was obviously a harmless identifier that I was never supposed to find out about, so it should have been no harm, no foul. Wow. Mm -mm. You weren't supposed to know, so you shouldn't be offended. Yeah, (laughs) foul. Okay. It's like, it's the typical relax. Literally. It's the same as, quote, Jessica with red hair. (laughs) Not quite. (laughs) That's ridiculous. So fucked up. I feel like it is not (laughs) harmless, though, to use an identifier that is so embarrassing and made me the butt of jokes. I think I could be the asshole because I don't know what HR would do and what if it is too extreme. I don't want anyone fired. Hmm. Well, that's tough. Probably going to happen because that's sexual harassment. You think that's a fireable offense? Yeah. Yeah, Really? Yeah. Yeah. Sexual Mm. harassment like that is like not tolerated. Mm. I, oh God, I, one time I remember walking into a bar and the bouncer looked down at me and I, I don't like to wear bras because they're not that comfy Mm -hmm. and perks of small boobs. And he looks down at me and he goes, Oh, it must be really cold outside (sighs) while staring at my boobs. And I was just like, my jaw dropped. What a creep. That's uncomfy. You can think it, but don't say it. I'm like, go ahead and think it. But to say that out loud, what? (laughs) Yeah. See, I do think uh, this is kind of. You know how there's the free the nipple movement? Yeah. So in some senses, people are trying to kind of desexualize nipples. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. But but in a work setting, it still is inappropriate. So I do think it's worth going to HR for because that's really inappropriate. And it is sexualizing yeah. your body in a work environment. But at the same time, they could say, oh, we feel like we're not sexualizing you because you know, women. You didn't well, wear the proper uniform. Yeah. It's behind her back, though. Yeah, I agree. So, so it's I like, think it's wrong. The fact that yeah. it was very, it became a toxic work yeah. environment. It was which, a joke behind her back. Yeah, mm-hmm. which everyone is entitled to a healthy work environment. Like, I'm pretty sure that's in everyone's employee mm-hmm. handbook and, like, code yeah. of conduct. Like, if you feel you have a toxic work environment, please talk to your manager, your supervisor, HR. Like, everyone is entitled to a fair and equal work environment. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, I can't imagine everyone, you being the butt of everyone's joke. And mm-hmm. it's not, it's probably not even that floor, too. Think about how big hospitals are. Mm-hmm. The hospital I work in is a 400-bed hospital. So there's easily 400 nurses. Wow. Yeah. So, like, f- basically, you're the float. So you work on every floor then. Mm. So what if every single floor, you're you're the hospital-wide, Jessica with the nibbles. Yeah. No, I definitely think she's not the asshole for going to HR. No. I think we agree on that. I, like, I don't want to call myself a tattletale. Because I, I don't feel like a tattletale. That word. And I, I, in this situation, I'm like, in my head right now, in my advice, I'm like, yes, go to HR. Fuck those people. Like, you're a nurse. You, you have literally one of the most valuable jobs, especially look at the past year in this panorama. Like, for sure. And so I'm like, one, I'd find a new job. Fuck them. But then in my head, I'm like, I'd really fuck with them. I'd like. How? I'd make them on edge, like, oh, yeah, like, are you looking at my nipples again today? Hmm, might have to go to HR. Like, <laughs> I would just want to fuck with them. Like, make them <laughs> so in, uncomfortable. Morgan in a work environment, I'm Morgan, just picturing that. Like, Morgan's <laughs> like, everyone deserves a safe work environment. <laughs> and but, then, but I'm also going to torture you and make you think you're going to get fired daily. <laughs> well, they fucked with her for how long? It's like, it's fair. <laughs> we have it. Roll the tape. <laughs> you said it 10 seconds ago. I know, but I'm like, they've been so mean to her. And <laughs> Roll the tapes. <laughs> you just want her to stick up for herself. I know, I know. I agree. I mean, she could, go, okay, she could go to them and say... Hold a meeting with yeah, everyone. No, she she could just say, "Hey, like I've heard about my nickname, not cool. I don't. I don't want to go to HR, but if this doesn't stop, it makes me feel uncomfortable." I think that would be a great step. Then you're just being upfront. Mm-hmm. Well, and they've they are been warned. Then. Their boots a little bit because you warned them. Yes, you know. See, this is the logical response, <laughs> the healthy response. No, I mean, I see where you're going with. Your- I just like. <laughs> oh, I hate lashing out, but it's just like I just yeah. feel for her. Like I'd want to be mean for her, not mm-hmm. make her be mean. Yeah. It sucks that she had no one else go to bat for her. Yeah. Because you would think what, like, 
if any of us were in that hospital, I feel like we would be the champion of that. And yeah. Be like, Stop. That's not funny. Mm -hmm. Don't call her that. No, it's so sad. So when I worked at a bar in college, we actually would nickname the owner of the bar the Eagle. Um, and he didn't know <laughs> why. <laughs> because first of all, he was low-key kind of evil. And um, he, are Eagles evil? No, 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 no. Oh. But but we just we needed a code name because we couldn't say his name mm -hmm. out loud. But everyone would pass it around. We had walkie-talkies, too. So we'd oh be like, God, the eagle has na landed. Or the eagle has <laughs> landed. Yeah, and so, or like the eagle has nested. And everyone just knew what it meant. And just in case, because we didn't want to have on the walkie-talkies and him here. Uh -huh. um, and basically, it was because he was really, really scary and really, really mean. So that's why we had a code name, just because we, we wanted to notify everyone because yeah. they needed to act accordingly when he was everyone there. needed a fair warning yeah but even how, as mean as he was we wouldn't call him mean nicknames mm, okay. we called him the eagle yeah fair enough so why the hell are they calling jessica with the nipples jessica with the nipples exactly like, doesn't she have a last name right yeah they're just all jessica johnson yeah <laughs> just call her by her last name yeah people are mean like, sometimes yeah not the asshole yeah, and yeah. that's the overall vote on the thread. Top comment, yeah. not the asshole. You need to talk to your boss and HR. This is a form of harassment. Mm -hmm. Instead of calling you Jessica with the brown hair or short Jessica or any wow. other innocuous identifier, your colleagues picked a secret sexual one. Yeah. And yeah. they know it's wrong too because they kept it a secret mm -hmm. and they are being squirrely about yeah. it. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Case closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, HR probably won't pull individual people aside. They would most likely have a group meeting to go over how this is not acceptable in general. So I would definitely go to HR, which I didn't know that. I honestly thought they'd just like. They might do a seminar on like without identifying people. I they might that. They might do a workers harassment, mm -hmm. kind of like the office episode where they do. I haven't seen the office. Oh my God. They do a, an episode on harassment. Oh my God. The Michael Scott is like, doesn't know the first thing about <laughs> anti-harassment. So he just like fails, but. That's what I'd picture. Yeah, I guess it does make sense because there's there's too many people involved. To at this point, who do you blame? Who's the first one that threw the rock? You mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be able to identify them. Mm -hmm. It was so awkward. At one of my jobs, um, we had to do a – because people were dressing so recklessly, we had to do a, what you guys were saying, basically a seminar mm -hmm. or educational meeting about dress code. And we went through this whole long thing about dress code and what's appropriate versus what's not. And – after that, we did this award ceremony for all these sales achievements. The girl who won the most was wearing the shortest leather skirt. Oh, no. And everyone was like, this is so uncomfortable because she had to keep going up to get her trophies and her awards. And right after, it was like, this is wrong. <laughs> no, wait. What job was this? ADP. Was it? Yeah. I figured. But I just <laughs> People were dressing inappropriately oh, there. <laughs> Do I know the person? No, she was an Orange County girl. Okay. Well... Hopefully, Jessica can get this sorted out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On to the next. Am I the asshole for forcefully moving into my boyfriend's gaming room? My boyfriend and I moved in together at the beginning of 2020, i.e. right before the pandemic started. We both have desk jobs, so we've been working from home for over a year now. Initially, both of our desks were set up in the living room, and we had to deal with each other's work calls all the time. It was a nightmare. I asked him if he could move his desk into the spare room, which is where his gaming setup is. But he said that he didn't want to work in the same place he goes to relax. So I moved my desk into our bedroom instead. Ever since I moved into the bedroom, my boyfriend has become very particular about me being in the living room during work hours. He acts like it's his office. I ate my lunch in there a few times, but our lunch times are different, and he said that I was distracting him from work, so I started eating lunch in the bedroom instead. I've been doing this for about 10 months now. Last week, I tried to sit down and speak to him about how awful it is to spend 18 hours of my day in one room. He was sympathetic, but also told me he couldn't do anything about it. I asked him again to move into the spare room or at least let me eat lunch in the living room, and he refused to do either. So I asked him if we could maybe swap desks, seeing as I wouldn't have an issue with him eating lunch in the living room while I was working. He literally started laughing at me and told me that I was crazy if I thought that I was guilting him into swapping desks. The next morning, wow. you have words. <laughs> I, I, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. 
The next morning, I brought my work laptop into his gaming room and unplugged his entire setup. Tower, monitor, speaker, keyboard, everything. Good. Mm -hmm. I started working from there instead. He was oblivious until his first bathroom break of the morning when he spotted what I had done and started freaking out. (laughs) He threatened me with legal action. Wow! (laughs) You're kidding me. What? Uh, What? Who is this man? Ew, move out. I'm sorry. Oh my God, I, get rid of him yeah. immediately. <laughs> yeah. What? It's, um... He sounds like the little boy who would scream, like, like girls, like, boys go to Jupiter or, like, stuff like that. <laughs> boys go to Jupiter to get more stupider? No, well, well whatever it was that was against women. That's what oh, he sounds like. Um, <laughs> I only know the bo- the men hating version. Mm. I don't remember the other women one. Go to, may- maybe girls. it was women go to Jupiter to get more stupider. Yeah, let's go with that. That's what he sounds like. Men go to Mars to get more cars. Ew, oh, uh, I've never heard wow. that Wow, yeah. I'm sure it could be twisted in so many ways. Yeah. yeah, well, he just sounds like such a little child, and I'm disgusted. We're not even done yet, here. guys. Oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> he threatened me with legal action if anything was broken and told me that I was an immature, passive-aggressive asshole. Wow. I, I said that I would be working from there from now on. At the moment, he's not speaking to me. The more I think about it, the more I wonder if maybe it was an immature way to handle the situation. But I feel like I'm at the end of my rope and I can't keep spending all day in the same room. She's in there nonstop. She works in there. She eats in there. She sleeps in there. So we all have work from home experiences uh, given this last year and when the minute she said she was working from her bedroom, I relate to that because my desk is in my bedroom. You all, all mm-hmm. of you and yeah. your roomies, yeah. and I think all three of you. It's probably a very unhealthy thing. It's out of necessity, not by choice. Mm-hmm. It's healthy in the sense that because we have roommates, we have decided collectively that our common areas will remain common areas. Yeah, kitchen and living room will, will remain our living spaces. As unfortunate as it is, it's the only fair. And I think it's fair Choice. and I think it's good. I'm glad we did it that way. Mm-hmm. I think our rooms was the best option. However, I know that it is not good to wake up and spend, to work in the same area that you sleep in. It's personally affected my sleeping patterns. Oh, because, yeah, because when do you shut down? Right. How do you decipher? Exactly. I work longer than I need to now. I also know that I've been trying to work on a sleeping routine and – what I've read is that you're supposed to designate the bedroom a sleeping place. It's the only thing yeah, you do in the you're bedroom. you're like not supposed to The bedroom read. is for sleep and sex. Exactly. I tell this to my patients nonstop. Yeah, it's Morgan weird. has a full-blown podcast set up in her bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is out of necessity. Well, yeah, I know. So it's, you know, obviously it works, but if you have a choice, I would never choose. If I could choose... I would not put my desk in my bedroom. No, everyone well, would have a spare it, space. It blurs where you can... the line between work and What home. makes me so upset, though, is that, okay, so am I understanding this right, where he has a workspace? Mm-hmm. In the living room, and, right? Yes. And so then, she's already taken over to common yeah, area. Yeah, and then he has a game room? Yes. Yeah. Why wouldn't you make that an office? The fat, the, the nerve. That's what made me yeah. so mad. That's Because it's just The like, audacity. Yeah, the Literally. audacity. Like, how do you, th- how is that fair? Does he pay more rent? Is it his house? And even yeah. if it is, you're still being a jerk. Right. Like, we are but in like, a pan, de- pondery play or whatever. Like, <laughs> freaking. <laughs> Jump on. I was going to say the forbidden word. Take, okay, your game room, that's cute. That's nice. Sweet. We are in a freaking hard time. Yeah. Everyone's working from home mm-hmm. by no choice of their own. Fucking make your game room the living room at this point. And I don't care. Yeah, and make that an and, office. Yeah. And if he thinks that it makes so much sense that she that to, for someone to work in there, why can't they switch? Or why can't he work in there and she that's, can take yeah, the living that's what room? I'm saying. If yeah. that's already yeah. if that's already his space, weirdo. It's it's just a being, freak. Yeah, a freak. <laughs> it's fucking so disrespectful. Selfish. Yeah. And he's Selfish. Like, he's like, I don't want to self-centered. Like his own. Like let's operate under his own logic, right? Which is, I don't want to do work in my game room because that's a place I relax. What the fuck do I do in the bedroom? I sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the same logic is why would I want to work in our bedroom where I'm supposed to sleep? How old is this couple? No ages are mentioned. That is rare. But there is an update. Okay. Let's hear it. We're really heated. <gasps> no, and I'm I'm I like I I read this one a little bit, but I didn't read the update. So I'm just like 
I'm just baffled because if someone treated me this way yeah. and gave me absolutely no choices and said, no, go fuck yourself. Yeah. I'm, I'm a content. I'm going to take legal action. Of, that is fucked. It's a gaming yeah, computer. What? And what? I, I understand gaming is very important. It's a big leisure hobby. It sometimes is, uh, is a career for people. So sure. it's not his career. No, it's, it's not his career. Yeah. But also when you have a spare bedroom and it's a, it's a, bonus space for both of you mm -hmm. if it's a two-bedroom house and there's two of you there and you're yep. a couple it's a bonus space mm -hmm. for both of you and the fact that one person completely took it over and is now flipping out that she's even in there trying to Work. have some source mm. of like sanity yeah i could never be with a i person can't like that. believe this if Not i a million years. if i lived with brett and we had a we had the luxury of a freaking home office basically a second bedroom and he tried to deem it like his reading room or I, or I tried to deem it like my podcast or something like that. He, we would yoga room. Yeah. Whatever. It he is. would be like, no, are you crazy? And similarly, I would be like, are you crazy? We this is an office. This has to become an office. Yeah. Well, me and Justin, like we've talked about like finding a place like. He's ready to not have roommates. I'm ready to not live with my dad at, at 27. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but so we've like, we've just been like kind of hashing out the idea. Okay. What would that look like? And one bedrooms are honestly, they're more expensive than two bedrooms out here. Yeah. Two bedrooms are worth it. Yeah. So we're difference. like, let's get a two bedroom. It can be a catch all. It can be an office, a guest bedroom with a pull out couch. Mm -hmm. And we have visitors mm -hmm. and then it can be a, a podcast space. So, like, you have to agree on it. Yeah. Also, like, I get gaming setups are very complex and, like, big and whatever, but yeah. how much room can it be taken up if it's a spare bedroom? Why can't it be a gaming setup with, like, another desk for mm -hmm. a work-from-home situation? Could be a Well, and if smaller. no one's occupying that throughout the day. Right. Right. How does that make any sense? Right. It just it's so doesn't. selfish. So That's I wonder saying. if it is his house. Or but if even if it is his I house, know. it's so selfish. I know. I'm just yeah. wondering if that's yeah. where the entitlement is right. coming from. Right, that's what, I, yeah. Like, this is my setup. How dare you? Mm -hmm. Because I could see if for some weird reason Brett had some room set up in his house and I moved into his house and I went in there and kind of made myself at home, I could see the territorialness. Like, yeah. Brett wouldn't be that unreasonable, but I can see where the, like, initial, like, how dare you just come in and rearrange my home type yeah. thing. But still, it's not okay. Yeah, there's definitely, like, when... Any anytime someone else moves in in another person's space, there's a lot of adjustments that need to be mm -hmm. made. So I I completely see where what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. yeah, and I agree that could be part of it if it is his space. Right. Well, I've been talking to Jeff because I think I said this to you, but Jeff just is putting so much money into his house to renovate the entire thing. The house or the condo? His house. The house. He yeah. Lives in? Okay. And. I think, you know, that's great. It's his money, whatever he wants to do. But what makes me nervous is that eventually if we want to move in together, which is what we'd want to do if we continue to date, then right now, are we going to move into this place that you're investing all your money into that has been your home for years? Or are we going to go somewhere and find our own place? And my concern is if I go into this new place or the place that he's yeah. in right now, will it be your place and I'm just living in it or mm -hmm. will it be our home? And so – and that type that's of, very fair too. yeah it's it's and it is it's a real concern and he always is just like no if you move in when you move in whatever we decide to do it's your home just as much as it is mine and that's great but like once it actually comes to moving in who knows what could come who up knows? yeah like who we knows? had yeah. a friend who moved in with another friend and she moved into her existing apartment mm -hmm. and it wasn't the story it was very like territorial and yep. it's like yeah. This is my, my space, rules. Yeah. My rules. Well, so sometimes and like, it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think like we all get very comfortable in our spaces and you guys have lived together for six years and it works because you guys are all on the same page. You're comfortable with each other's routines, habits, lifestyle, communication style. Like you, if you weren't, you wouldn't have lived together this long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think in stuff like that where it's like, everyone's comfortable in their home and when you invite someone else in your home you're like wait I actually like things done this way this way and this mm -hmm. way but that's not reality right that's why when Lauren was talking about moving out because eventually we're you know we're not gonna live together forever what yeah <laughs> you what do you mean what you <laughs> spearheaded the campaign I know, I know, I know. and so long story short you know Sarah and I were like what would we do and we decided I mean, obviously everything can change, but we we didn't like the idea of having, having another roommate. Yeah, because it's a lot would, of uh, 
changes the dynamic. A lot of potential for it could disasters. cause issues. Right. We're just you know Especially with work from home. With work from home, Definitely. we've lived together for years, so it, it would that person would feel like they're coming into our space. Mm-hmm. We've lived in that apartment for almost four years. Yeah. So. I mean, it's anyway. I guess we're assuming we don't know if this is his place. Let's find out. We're trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's find out. Benefit of the doubt. That's good. So she goes, mm-hmm. edit number one. Sorry, just to clarify, when I asked my boyfriend to move his desk into his gaming room, I meant his work setup, not his physical desk. The spare room would be too small for his physical desk. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. Which. So you're okay with him having a desk in the living room? So he would just move his work stuff into the game room? Probably the computer, mo- like the but monitor. But not the physical desk. Yeah. So it does sound like it's too small. The desk is in the living both. room right now. Okay. By yeah. this, by reading this. Yeah. Edit number two. Hi, everyone. I'm just about to go to bed for the night, so I wanted to give this post a quick update. I'm overwhelmed by all the messages of support. Thank you so much to everyone who commented. A few people have expressed concern over my safety. I promise I'm okay. I actually left the apartment tonight to give my boyfriend some space and I'm staying at my brother's place. I'll probably go back tomorrow evening, but I am considering ending the relationship. My brother thinks that I should and he said that I can stay with him if I want to move out. Thank you all again for your feedback and support. So what'd she decide? I would... I honestly think she should absolutely yeah. end the relationship. I think that's a telltale yeah. sign of how yeah. this is going to go. Yeah, moving forward, mm-hmm. what is that going to look like? Like right. He sounds... Like a child. Sounds very selfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He sounds like little rascals when they have the like he, she, man, like woman hater club. Oh my God. I I never saw that. Like little kid references. But that's what he sounds like to me. He just sounds like such a little brat Mm -hmm. and like a woman hater. (laughs) Two, it also, it could very likely be his house because of the fact that she's like, if I want to move out, I can go with my brothers. Like, I feel like if it was anything else and there was another dynamic, like a lease, I feel like she would be like, I'm not mm-hmm. out of my lease until mm-hmm. blah, 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 which mm-hmm. missing context, but he could still be the lease holder and she could be paying half or something. Right. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also true. Comments. Um, it's like a quote of what she said. And it goes, he literally started laughing at me and told me I was crazy if I thought I was guilting him in a swamping, swamping, into swapping dust. He threatened me with legal action if anything was broken and told me I was an immature, passive-aggressive asshole. And the person comments, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Literally. This yeah. isn't how normal adults act. Mm-hmm. This is not a healthy way to treat one's partner. Not the asshole, obviously. Mm-hmm. Especially someone who loves you. Like, you're not siblings. No. Sometimes siblings can get out of yeah. pocket with each other. But, like... Yeah. You if, know? Yeah, if I was living with my brother or something, I could yeah. even my brother would be way better about this, but I could see him being a little bit more stubborn or something. Right. But someone who loves you and you're in a relationship with to treat you like that, Brett would never talk to me like that. Yeah. Even if I like disassembled his entire workout room yeah. to accommodate a You're desk. a passive yeah. aggressive asshole. Yeah, you're, you're immature. You would be like, oh Hunter, why yeah. didn't we talk about this? Like this is not I don't feel comfortable with this, but let's talk about it. He wouldn't mm-hmm. like gaslight me, you know? Yeah, and same with even, even my brother. Like, he would never even... No. Even if he was like, well, it's my game room. Like, he would be nice about it and have conversations and would probably give. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even a brother and sister relationship, I just think this is so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, my brother would be way better. Yeah, he's acting like she's like some stranger yeah. who just came in and... Yeah. It's very, very, very bizarre to me because I look at a relationship as a partnership. I say that a lot. And I mm-hmm. think... If you're not happy for your partner's success or you're threatened by your partner's success or you don't want for them to succeed, at the end of the day, this is her work. This is her livelihood. This is her career, her success. So if you're literally pigeonholing her in a corner and making it so difficult for her to, one, work, have a livelihood, have a, a sense of income, and then you're also making her home life and her mental health depreciate right. and be affected right she's not trying to like hang out she's trying to work she's trying to work and just live she's right live her life yeah. and like he got the the best stick he drew the the big stick or whatever the fucking saying mm-hmm. is like he got the living room straw straw mm-hmm. she he drew the biggest straw and so it's like somehow he got lucky and she compromised and she went in the bedroom and mm-hmm. he stayed in the living room mm-hmm. it's like that didn't need to be her to do but she did it yeah. So it's like what she compromised and he wasn't. Willing yeah. To. Now all my coworkers that I work with that are always in their living room, 
when I'm talking like, to them. Luxury. I'm, no, I'm like, is this you? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, oh. Is this post about you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about all. Do you of- like game room? Yeah, literally. <laughs> but for most of my coworkers that I work with, when I talk to them, you can see like the back of their living rooms. Right. Um. So now everyone's suspicious. Everyone's suspect. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um. So she actually op actually responds to this. Thank you for responding. I'm seeing a lot of comments saying the same thing about his behavior. Mm -hmm. Someone else goes, seriously, are you happy with this guy? He doesn't seem to care much for your feelings or comfort. Putting himself first every time. Is this how you want to live your life? Not the asshole. And OP comments back, honestly, the responses to this post have given me a lot to think about. Lockdown is ending pretty soon in our country. Maybe it's time to think about moving out. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. it absolutely is. Having an entire room for his gaming setup is a luxury. Yeah, he should not luxury. have when you're being confined to one room of the house the whole day. He shares the entire apartment with you, not just one out of three bedrooms. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of comments. It's um, it's messed up. This one though, threatening to sue her while they're dating implies that he'd threaten divorce whenever he's mad they're married. Facts. Or threaten to take the kids in divorce. And wow, I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. But that's a big threat. Mm-hmm. That's I'm going to sue you? What? Like breaking my gaming supplies? I don't think unplugging a computer is going to break it. But even if she did, let's just say she pulled it too hard and it bent the cord. You're going to sue her. You're going to sue her. Your girlfriend? Yeah. Versus just like make her pay for the damage or right. something. Right, like you psycho. Rational. Yeah. Yeah. Dude sucks. Mm. No. Moving right along. Getting over this one. Mm-hmm. I hope she dumped him. Me too. Yeah. Last but not least, am I the asshole for expecting my boyfriend to replace all my socks, the exact ones as I had before? This might seem silly. I, 24 female, like wearing cheerful socks since my work uniform is all white. Currently working as a phlebotomist. It usually cheers up the patients too. A what? A what? Phlebotomist. What is a phlebotomist? Um, they're the people that take your blood. Oh. Mm. My worst <laughs> enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if yours had so happy a socks. vampire. The villain in my yeah. story. <laughs> the vampire <laughs> taking my blood. <laughs> uh, Alejandro's got white coat syndrome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Taking blood. I have to take the day off work. I have to take like prescribed muscle relaxers. Like I. It's a bad experience. Trauma for you. Is an as an understatement. But okay. Okay. I've spent a few years collecting strange socks, ones with sushi, pizza, corgis, cats. Oh, my God. What? No. No! She says Nick Cage. I've spent a few years collecting strange socks, ones with sushi, pizza, corgis, cats, Nick Cage. Wow. Wow. Did you just find your best friend? I think I did. Um, If you're listening and not watching, I'm drinking tea out of a Nicolas Cage mug. Mm Mm-hmm. I love him. I think I had about 30 pairs. My boyfriend, 29 male, has always hated them and thinks they're childish. So I agreed to only wear them to work and never on dates or around his friends and family. I thought that was fair. On Boxing Day, his parents came over for coffee and gifts, just the four of us, which is allowed where I live and keeping a solid three meters apart. I accidentally put on a pair of childish socks and his mother made a comment about it. I explained that I wear them to work to cheer people up, and she liked that. My boyfriend didn't. The next day, (laughs) yeah, the next day, all my socks were gone, and the drawer was filled with plain black (laughs) socks. I asked my boyfriend, and he told me he threw them away and purchased some more appropriate socks. So I won't embarrass him in front of his parents again. What's his problem? What the hell? (laughs) I... what are you that threatened by socks Socks. what i love when people wear like awesome socks i I, at work when guys will wear boring things and they come up and cross their legs and i would see like some like pokemon socks it's called peacocking it was the coolest thing ever yeah Yeah. it's peacocking with your socks i i obviously love it i think it's amazing when you have to dress very uniform or boring or plain or strict and then you can like have this pop of like your identity and your Personality. personality maybe he was jealous of nick cage probably was who isn't (laughs) i told him that's insane they were mine and he had no right to throw them away 
not to mention that I spent some time collecting them. So I made a list of the ones I remembered I had and told him that I expect the same ones as a replacement. He told me that's completely unreasonable and that it would take a lot of time, effort, money for him to find those specific pairs. I haven't changed my mind yet. They cost me a lot of time and effort to find too. I think he's being controlling. He thinks Extremely. He thinks I'm being unreasonable and demanding. Wow. Am I the asshole? No. 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 This guy's a jerk. No, I'm I'm honestly the most confident about this, not the yeah. asshole. Yeah. What? It's he disgusting. threw away your property. Yeah. Yeah. He has no right. He doesn't get to tell that's you what you so wear. That's so rude. That's and that's insane. a part of her. That's her personality. Yeah. And that he's he's like diluting her personality. You know what she reminds me of though? I picture her being like Jess from New, New Girl. Girl. Yeah. Jessica Day. Just very spiritful. It's like if you did that to Jess from New Girl, that is some heartless shit. It would be heartbreaking <laughs> for her. Yeah. I've never seen the show, but I uh, will believe you. Yeah. We'll watch it tonight. She's okay. just very spunky, wears spunky clothes. But I mean, I'm the same way. Like, I love my funky socks. Like, people get me gifts. Like, when they get me gifts, they buy weird socks. Like, mm. Jordan got me a pair of, like, British flag socks from London. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure you both have gotten me socks. So, really? Yeah. Love that. Doesn't ring a bell, but I... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> both of wow, you like, really care about my presents. <laughs> no, I forget. No, I but, like, I... just I, get you so many. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> I just, like, I don't... I, like, I relate to it in that way. And I also, I'm, like, you should never, ever, ever, ever pur purposefully damage or destroy someone's property or yeah like throwing them away this makes me sad me I, too. I would have been like you need to go outside in the dumpster or wherever the fuck you put them and go get them back yeah well i wouldn't want them anymore but like go i mean if they're in them. a bag like oh, yeah, if, if they're, in, they're a bag, in a bag they're safe it doesn't sound like you took care of them <sighs> what a dick i that mean that makes me really sad. Like so mean. There's, and there's, like there's, he didn't have a conversation before to address he, it. Well, he thought he was by telling her to not wear them in. And his mom thought it was cool. Non-work settings. Yeah, he must be very threatened. He must have a very low self-esteem or or extremely type A. I honestly feel like he's like and embarrassed. just needed it to all be like matching or something. Yeah, or like maybe it's deeper than that, and he's embarrassed about part of who she is, mm -hmm. and this is part of that. Mm, and it's manifesting in this way. It's manifesting mm. in this way, and like. My boyfriend and I, we don't always see eye to eye on fashion. Sometimes I'll wear things and Brett will just be like, really? And I'm like, yeah. But I have lear like learned to stand firm in yeah. what I like. And that's okay. Brett, he's not being mean. He's just honest. He's like, that's it's not his... my favorite. Yeah. But if that makes you happy, great. And I would be very sad if, let's say, I had a collection of like kind of spunky shoes or like jewelry that I got to wear maybe like just with my girls. And I came home. And Brett had thrown that away. I it would actually make me really sad. Yeah, that's so hurtful. That's a part of who she is. It's her yeah. identity. And he's basically saying, "Fuck that." It would that's definitely. Ugly. It sounds extreme, but it would definitely make me question the relationship. Same. That, uh, that's what I'm getting yes. at. It would mm -hmm. feel. It would be hard for me to look past it because yeah. I would think like, "That's so hurtful." Mm -hmm. You were so easily able to just throw away something that brings I care about. Joy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. Big red flag. Big red flag. He Not doesn't respect asshole. you. He doesn't respect your personal property. Do they live together? It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Otherwise, you know, how would he have that access? Yeah. Maybe he just did it. I don't know. He would have hated me because, like, up until recently, I just finally went through and got rid of all of my socks that had, like, holes in them and that were, like, mismatched. I, and, like, <laughs> I always wear mismatched socks. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so she goes... I think I might be an asshole for asking for the exact same pairs. I know that'll take a lot of effort to find. He shouldn't have thrown them away yeah. then. Also, his comment that he says, he told me that's completely unreasonable and that it would take a lot of time, effort, and money. Then you shouldn't have done well, it. guess what? It took her a lot of time, effort, and yeah. money to build that collection. Yeah. And you took the time, effort to throw them away, so. Yeah. She gives another update and says, thanks everyone for replying. I've realized that this might not be a normal fight. And I'm evaluating the relationship. Good. No other updates beyond that. Um, she comments a couple times on it. Um, someone asked her where she got the Nick Cage socks. She unfortunately. Important data. I know. I was she like, did not reply. Is this assuming. me? She did, but she's like, I got them for a birthday present. Damn. She's like, somebody, See, another somebody asked where the Nick Cage. It was Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some user. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's her name morgan oh uh, i have the best picture of you wearing your nick cage shirt and looking at all hunter's boyfriend brett yeah. and just making the craziest face because i don't know what you guys were discussing but i'm gonna send the picture over to you and you need to post it because it's it's iconic it, the, the oh caption is you don't like nick cage yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah or it's like what do you mean you don't know who nick cage is yeah and your I'm face very, is mortified your face is i'm so very mortified. Uh, i'm very offended by people not liking him but i um how many I, times have you seen National Treasure? Easily 300 at this point. What? Yeah. 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 300 Swear more to God. Easily. I watched it like every day once for a year. Because so 365 at least. Yeah. There's oh not my a gosh. movie in It's my world. bedtime movie. Like whenever I would like get mm -hmm. tired or like I'm stressed, I'm just like, let me just put on National Treasure and just yeah. rock out to Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't think you watched every single minute no. of the movie that many times, but you've definitely played it. If you don't know like 80% of the lyrics by heart. Lyrics. <laughs> the lines. <laughs> At least Nick. It's a sing-along. But a sing do you want to know? Do you want to know something musical. really unique about me? What? what? There is not one single song that I've memorized completely. I can't memorize music. Interesting. What? I can't. Is I, Justin like appalled? Has that given him pause? No, he like wasn't. He was like, "Oh, that's that's cool." I'm like. Wait, what? Okay. Yeah, I just can't memorize music. No matter how much I like the song, no matter how much I listen to it, I cannot remember the words, and I constantly mess them up and, like, switch them. Well, I wish I had that talent because I don't even know how much storage in my brain is living rent-free. All lyrics. the lyrics to every single Little Wayne song. It's probably why you forget everything else. Probably, because the <laughs> yeah. storage is full, and it's being occupied by all Little Wayne lyrics. song lyrics. It's, uh, well, and it's that Backyardigans new album. Backyardigans. Oh, Backyardigans. Backyardigans. Yeah. What'd you call them? Backyardians. <laughs> <laughs> Example A. <laughs> Backyardigans. If you cast haven't listened away. to Into the Thick of It. We are castaways. Those songs slap. Ahoy there. Ahoy. Yeah, she um she comments a couple other times. Uh, someone goes, oh my God, divorce him now. Oh, they're married? Oh, they're married. And she goes, luckily we're not married. Oof. Yeah. And she goes, <laughs> dodged I mean, a sock bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. She goes, I mean, I've tried talking to him. He doesn't think he did anything wrong or that he should fix it. If he's reacting like that about throwing away, stealing my personal things that mean a lot to me, I don't have a lot of hope for it to work out. I agree. Yeah. All right. Bye, Mr. Sock Guy. And Fuck you. On. Sock thief. Sock thief. There's other stories that are eerily similar to this one, though, about like this guy who like his girlfriend collected jars and she liked making her like fancy little drinks in jars and it made her feel good, like sparkling water with fruit in it. And like she'd do mint leaves and just like make herself like these really cute drinks. And this was like something that made her super, super happy. And it annoyed the shit out of him. And he threw away all of her jars. Sad. Yeah. And then there was this other guy who his wife or girlfriend was really, really into making salad dressing like organic mm -hmm. home crafted salad dressing. And he was like, I'm getting really tired of her making all this dressing and it just sits in our fridge. So he threw it all away. You have to be so like angry. Yeah. You have mad to be at the world. Yeah. To take someone's passion project and just throw it away. Just shit on it like that. Especially like, who is it? Who is it hurting? That is the best fucking question that has been asked about this whole thing. Yeah. Who the fuck is it hurting? Who's it hurting? No one. You? Are you buying the salad jars? Are you buying the socks? Even if you are, fuck off. Also, like, salad dressing, jars, socks, socks. 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 That you don't even have to really see. They literally are covered by pants half the time. You yeah, see, like, when she's at work. A blip. I'm literally going to buy so many new fun socks just in spite of this man. We, If this girl's listening, write to us. We will send you some socks. Hell yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I'll we'll literally, we should socks. do that. We should start a GoFundMe to get all of her socks back. Oh, I Aww. wonder if there is one. She didn't post anything else from the account. No other official updates, so. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know how we'd contact her, but if you're listening, we'll send you some THT socks. Yeah. <gasps> Two hot takes. What? <laughs> I, oh, it doesn't even change if it's three hot takes. Still THT. THT. Mm -hmm. I like that. Genius. Genius. Yes. This was fun. This was fun. I love having both of you. This actually went surprisingly very well. Yeah. I agree. Very well. 
We were very mm-hmm. and into the recording. I was like, "Whoa, we didn't set gro- we didn't set any ground rules." No, we didn't. We didn't have. Any I thought terms. we would need a talking stick. I thought we would need. I thought I Morgan was, was gonna have going to, to yell cut. give a talking stick too. Yeah, I thought for sure we were gonna have to redo this. Wow. So I'm very very proud of that outcome. I know. I like this going forward. I mm-hmm. think we could maybe the title should change. Like <laughs> no no no, keep your brand. Tweet twee. <laughs> Twee. Twee. Twee hot takes. Twee hot takes. Two or three. You just never know what you you're going to get. You never know. Twee. Wow. I love that. Yeah. Just kidding. So, fun fact, we're, we are actually friends in real life. It's not staged. I know. <laughs> Someone commented, like, when are you all going to do one together? That's because well, you're clearly correlated, but, like, yeah. we haven't seen past cross yet. You know yeah. what I feel like it is, is equivalent to? The Disney Channel shows when like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody the and like Hannah Montana and they the all cameos. come together. The, yeah. cro- the crossover yeah. episodes. They do that with like yeah. Grey's, Grey's Anatomy and whatever other shitty shows ABC has. I think yeah. that's fun. That's what this episode is. Yeah. It's like a new world. It is. Two it's worlds colliding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When worlds collide. That's exactly right. Mm. Yeah, well, let's go get some fucking food. Yeah, we need to eat. So hungry. We're so hungry. Thanks for joining us on another episode, you guys. We hope it was entertaining. And until next time. Until next time. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.